So, I had this thought the other day while watching my favorite Pokemon live-action movie, Ms. Heck Pikachu. And I thought to myself, I've seen this movie before. No, not the Pikachu movie, but this movie. Who is it? And I've seen that movie in this one. Who is it? And that got me thinking, hey, is Home Alone in the Pokemon universe? Creating a Pokemon cinematic universe like all companies are trying to do now? Is this the longest running cinematic universe in movie history? Is Pokemon the real Goliath in this movie production war? The Titan that will snap the universes out of existence, out of the way? Has Kevin McAllister single handedly defeated Harry, Marv, his older brother Buzz, and his conquered god but decided, hey, you know what I need now? No, not to run for office. That's been done before. I need to break the fourth wall even more. Made my family disappear. Crushing the studios, showing them what for. So are these universes connected? No. They are not. But what if they were? Assuming Kevin McAllister is in the Pokemon world, we should determine where he's from, which region he's in. The clothes, the music, the setting. New York. I'm going with New York. And what better region than the region based on New York? Unova. Let's start where every trainer starts, with the starter. We got the three. Let's start, let's, let's list them off. Snivy. According to Bulbapedia, Snivy is calm and intelligent. Kevin is calm and intelligent. He handles tricks and schemes with the collected ease. So Snivy is a good choice. But let's not rule out the other Pokemon before we decide on this one. Tepig. Tepig doesn't have much description other than acting like an excited puppy. So I'm just going to rule, rule that one out. Uh, Oshawott. We, all, we know him. We love him. Oshawa. Oshawa is described as mischievous and slightly aggressive. You know who else is mischievous and slightly aggressive? Kevin. Kevin is. They're quick to cower and flee, which also seems like it's very Kevin. Snivy is described as being very snobby, and the name kind of also suggests this, so maybe we just take Snivy out of the running too. So, Oshawa. Oshawa is the starter. Good. We've got that out of the way. We have that down. Now we need to map out his route. Assuming he had to travel to reach the professor in Nuvema Town, since his setting and movies are snow enveloped, uh, he would need to get back home at some point. And since Unova experiences seasonal changes at the same time, it's expected that he lives in the city, just based off of Home Alone 2. The better one. So he needs to get back to Castelia City, which, uh, pretty simple route. Just walk. Walk it. But what happened along the way? Let's say Kevin is the luckiest trainer out there, because he has proven uh, he is the luckiest kid out there. You know, with running into all the people he needs to to complete his tasks, his journeys, his schemes, and his tricks. So the Pokemon he finds may be among the rarer in the region, or area. But no amount of luck will change the fact that he was running into Lillipup first. His Lillipup he gets, and he names it Turtle. After the turtle doves, he receives in Home Alone 2, the better one. He runs into a purloin on Route 2, further displaying his luck, and he catches it. He doesn't name it. This one's kind of just a placeholder for, you know, team further down the line. He just kind of needs, like, another Pokemon throw to get through the area. Uh, on Route 3, he picks up a pit of, which gets him just so happy. He names this one, uh, Pigeon Lady. After the friend he made in Home Alone 2, the better one. I tried finding out the character's name, and it's, uh, Pigeon Lady. Pigeon Lady will be a mainstay on the team. As a quick aside, I'm skipping over the towns and cities he's passing through, since that's just kind of the story part of these games, and that's all pretty self-explanatory. Kevin heads into Pinwheel Forest, where he encounters a timber, which he's also very fond of, since it reminds him so much of his uncle Rob. He names him Rob. Obviously. He finishes up business in the forest and heads across the bridge. Now he's finally home. 
He shows off his new team to his mom, who proudly exclaims, <laughs> He decides to relax here for a little because, much like anime and Vin Diesel, Kevin is all about family and friends. And this is where his journey ends. Kind of a short journey. Or is it? See, I like to think that Kevin would pursue this journey to the fullest to get the most out of it. He pushes forward, pushing through Route 4, where nothing really happens, over to Route 5, where he catches a Trubbish, and since there aren't any brick Pokemon to throw at Harry and Marv, picks the next closest thing. Garbage. He goes through Route 6, picking up a Vanillite, since what kid doesn't like ice cream, and into the cave, where he finds one of his closest companions yet, a Joltik. He will name Axel, after the tarantula his brother Buzz owned. Up to Route 7, he picks up a Pokemon that I'm personally throwing in here because its evolution is a fan favorite. Among Us. Over in Route 12, things start to get interesting. See, over all this time, Kevin started to develop a gambling addiction, and he found himself a Rapidash, his prized horse. This horse will go on to help him in the future, but let's worry about that later. Fast forward, and Kevin has found his way to Victory Road, where his journey would meet an unfortunate end. He was just unable to make it through the cave and onto the Elite Four. His team he cultivated over his journey just wasn't up to the task, and because of his sentimental attachment to them, he just couldn't leave them in the box to sit there alone for eternity. He decided to turn around, never knowing what lay beyond the cave, and retire his Pokemon hat for a while. He became a businessman in his home city. His prize horse won him some money, which he used to set up what would become his legacy. Kevin grew up and forgot his joy. His fun he had, the journeys he went on. He returned to his family home long after everyone had left and managed his business from there. And there we find him. Old. Home. Where he would reside for a time. He would think back occasionally to his gags, his tricks, his pranks, his siblings. All of these point to another fact I found interesting. What other character also had these traits? Gags, pranks, siblings, tricks. The Trick Master. So how did he get to Hoenn? The old-fashioned way, by plane. Or bird. Pokemon. He called the hotel. He started his scheming plots out of. From there, he started his true legacy. He was unable to further his business practices in Innova, since he fell into a deep fit of gambling, tax fraud, and tax evasion. He needed an out, and this new scheme would give him just that. He would work doing what he truly loved, the thing he forgot he loved, after all these years of drugs and power. Tricks. It's always been tricks. He was doing what he loved and didn't work a day of his life. He experienced that Christmas Carol style revelation. Buzz was there, Harry, Marv, all since past. Probably, you know, one trick too far, one trick too many. He saw what truly brought him joy, what started his journey in the first place, and from there sold his Rapidash so he wouldn't be tempted by the gambling anymore. He kept those other Pokemon who grew up with him and had them work with renovations for his new building, his Trick House. A house fully devoted to pranks, tricks, gags, the whole works. And there we have it. The mystery of who the Trick Master really is. That wasn't it. Uh, oh, the Home Alone Pokemon. Whatever. <laughs>